Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Tamlin and this is Sewn on the Tine and I'm here today with a really exciting video for you. I'm going to be introducing the new Tammy Handmade pattern, the Cara Cardigan, talking you through my version, but also I'm going to be sewing up a new version with you and I'm really excited. So this video is in collaboration with Tammy and I was thrilled when she asked me if I would like to collaborate on YouTube with her because I love Tammy's patterns, I love her as a business, I love her YouTube channel and I'm always really really happy to support her. Some of her patterns have turned out to be real workhorses in my wardrobe. If you know my love for the Naya t-shirt then <laughs> you'll understand what I'm talking about. So Tammy recently released the Cara cardigan which is described as a stylish pattern featuring dropped sleeves, a lovely neckband with a button detail at the front and two length options for you. And then there's also two different variations on the sleeves. You can do a little cuff like this, or you can just do a simple turned up hem at the bottom. It's designed to be loose and cozy, a bit oversized and snuggly. Fabric types that you're going to need for this pattern are going to be light to medium weight knit fabrics. So as you can see, I am wearing a version of the Cara Cardigan now because I was actually on the testing team for this pattern and I have sewn up a version in this lovely waffle knit jersey. So this is a fabric that came in a So Hayley Jane subscription box oh a few months ago now and I loved it at the time because teal is one of my favourite colours and I loved the waffle texture. I thought it was really unique, a little bit different, something I didn't already have in my stash and something I hadn't sewn with before. Oh, that's not true. I've got one waffle knit jumper, <laughs> which I absolutely love and I wear all the time. So it's just got this lovely grid texture as the name suggests the waffle and it just adds a little bit of something. It makes it nice and cosy and it's not just flat and boring and then it's got this lovely design printed on this floral which is really really cute. So the Cara cardigan is a digital sewing pattern so you will receive digital files which you could either print out at home on your printer or you can send it off to a copy shop to be printed which is the option that I go for. <laughs> I haven't got time to be sticking this pdf together. The pattern comes in sizes 6 to 32 so in terms of measurements the size 6 is a 31 inch bust 24 inch waist 34 inch hip and then a 32 is a 57 inch bust, 50 inch waist and a 60 inch hip. So a really great size range there on this pattern. My measurements put me exactly in a size 12 but from my previous experience of Tammy's patterns I tend to size down by one size. So looking at the finished garment measurements I went for a size 10 for this and I'm really happy with the fit. I'm going to stand up and show you. So this is the shorter version, obviously, you can see the length that it comes to there. That is my hip bone, so it's, you know, hip length. You can see the sleeve length there on me. And I've got the little cuffs. So I think it's a really gorgeous pattern and I think it's one that complements the rest of Tammy's range. She doesn't have a cardigan pattern already in her pattern collection. So I think this is a really great pattern for her to add. It was simple to sew up and Tammy's patterns tend to be quite simple, beginner friendly, but give you a really, really lovely finish. So I think she's nailed it yet again. One thing I found different about this pattern when I started sewing it is that I realised it doesn't have a hemband. Now, whenever I've sewn a cardigan pattern in the past, they've all had hembands at the bottom. So I wasn't quite sure how it was going to work or how it was going to look at the end. But actually, I think it gives it a really lovely sleek finish. Nice and lightweight. There's nothing bulky or heavy weighing it down there. And the bottom is just simply overlocked and then top stitched. So again, another really beginner friendly aspect of this pattern. So in terms of what I'm going to be doing for this collaboration, I thought it would be really fun to actually sew up the longer version of the pattern, just so that I can give both versions a go and share both with you and give my thoughts on both length variations of this pattern. So the longer version looks really cosy and snuggly, like you could just wrap yourself in it, maybe at home if you're just relaxing on the sofa, you know, you can just pull it on over anything, over a vest and jeans like I'm wearing mine with now, it would go over a dress, it would just be a really great layering piece and I think that I would make use of a longer version in my wardrobe. 
wardrobe. So in terms of the fabrics that I was thinking about, I knew I wanted it to be a little bit more snuggly and cosy than this one. This one's really lightweight and I love it, but going into those colder months I wanted something a little bit more snuggly so I was looking for something like a soft knit something that had that look of an actual knitted fabric but I wanted something a little bit different I didn't just want it to be plain so I had a look around lots of different fabric retailers and I enjoyed that time doing a little bit of window shopping or online shopping and just trying to find something and I was struggling a little bit to be honest to find something a little bit different until I was browsing through Fabric Godmother and I came across an amazing fabric. Now this is a fabric that they've got in two different colour variations and I think you'll know why I love this one so much when you see it. Look at this! How cool is that fabric? I just saw that and I was like that is the one, I have to have that fabric. So this is described as a fabulous knitted jacquard dressmaking fabric with wavy stripes and heart knitted design. It's called Saskia Wavy Knitted Jacquard and this is teal and it also comes in a tan variation so if the blue kind of blue shades aren't for you then tan might be a better option but I just thought it was really cool, retro, a bit funky, a bit psychedelic and just a bit different, not boring which is what I wanted. So the fabric the fabric is described as medium weight with a defined knit texture and then the reverse side is just plain like that. It is 62% recycled poly, 3% elastane and 35% poly and it's 154 centimetres wide. So I bought two metres of this fabric, it's priced at £17 per metre, so £34 for my two meters. The elastane gives it a lovely stretch and you can see the recovery there is good as well. So I'm just so excited about this fabric, I really am. I'm not sure this would unravel if you can see that lovely clean cut edge but I think I might just overlock those cut edges before I pop this into pre-wash just in case with it being a knitted fabric it might just unravel a little bit. So I'm going to overlock those edges, I'm going to pop it into pre-wash, I'm going to dry it, I'm not going to tumble dry it, I'm just going to air dry it and then I'll come back to you and we can start cutting out my Cara Cardigan version 2. So my fabric is now washed, here it is, it's washed really really well as I mentioned, I didn't tumble dry it. I just put it in on a normal cycle on my washing machine, like a short cycle and not a very high spin. And then I just air dried it inside. So it's washed really nicely and I'm ready to cut this out. But first I need to cut out my pattern. So I've had my pattern printed on A0 and I had that done by plan printing 24. I use them all the time. If I'm printing out a few patterns, it's really great value to get them printed at plan printing 24. I do love Fabuloso if I'm maybe getting one pattern printed, but when I've got a few, I tend to save them up and then send them all off together. It ends up really great value to do it this way. I think it's something like 75 pence a sheet, which is... <laughs> which is amazing. So I've got my pattern and I'm going to cut straight into that. None of this tracing, <laughs> just cut straight into it. The only thing I'm hesitating over is the length of the sleeves and the cuffs. I was really happy with the length of the sleeves on my tester version. And then Tammy mentioned that a few of the testers had found the sleeves too long. So she's shortened them slightly in the pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the sleeves, the main pieces and the pockets and the neckband. I'm not going to cut out the cuffs. Once I've constructed them up to the point where they need the cuffs, I'm going to try it on and see what I think and I might just extend the cuffs a little bit. So rather than extending the sleeve, I'll just make a longer cuff to get them to the length that I want. So that is my plan. So yes, I'm going to cut out with my rotary cutter and cutting mats. I'm going to cut out my fabric in a size 10, but I'm not going to cut out the cuffs just yet.
come to you from the future. <laughs> so I have just got my overlocker set up ready to start sewing the car card again. Choosing the threads was quite tricky. I'll show you why in a moment. I'll turn you around and show you. But if you remember the fabric, well, you will remember because you saw this literally a few seconds ago. That's the fabric. So we've got this like tealy blue colour. And then this colour, which is like a dark navy, but also a bit grey. And then the other side of the fabric is like a mix of the two. And I like my overlocker thread to match. So it was a little bit tricky choosing what to go for, but I will show you what I've gone for. So I'm just going to test my overlocker out on this piece of scrap here. So I will show you and we'll have a look at what that looks like and decide if I'm happy with it. And hopefully my new blades work. So yes, I've changed the blades in my overlocker, which I've never done. I've had my overlocker now for three or four years and it's been used a lot. So I thought it was finally time. It was showing signs things weren't quite as neat and it wasn't quite cutting things properly. So I'm hoping that that will have improved now that I have changed the blades. So yes, let's turn you around and show you what thread colours I've gone for. So in my loopers here, I've gone for like a pale blue, sorry about the shadows, a, a pale blue and a teal. And then in my needles, I've just gone for navy. So let's test that out and see what it looks like. Well, that initially didn't go very well. Exhibit A. <laughs> I hadn't installed one of the blades quite correctly. I just needed to screw it out a little bit and then screw it back in. Yeah, it chewed up. And yeah, I've just been testing it out on different pieces. I am happy with it, I think. I'm probably happy with <laughs> probably happy with how that's looking. So I can get started on sewing up car cardigan. I'm probably going to come to you a little bit later actually because I'm going to head to the gym now. <laughs> yeah, let's sew this up a little bit later once Taylor is in bed, Sam is out and I can just focus and get this sewn up. See you soon. I realised when I'd been testing it that I'd been sewing the fabric with wrong sides together rather than right sides together which is what I need to do to test if the thread is going to show through. So I've just done it with right sides together so that's what we'll see on the inside, which I'm happy with that. It's not too dissimilar to the colour of the fabric. And then from the right side, you can't see any threads there as I'm pulling that apart. So yes, we are good to go. We're here for some cosy Friday night sewing. I've got a little, well, it's a very large glass with a small amount of wine in it. It's Brancott Estate, Marlborough, New Zealand, the Sauvignon. Sauvignon. <laughs> I've got some dark chocolate with sea salt. I'm all set up. In the background, just on the door there, is a make that I finished earlier today. It's the Elysium Bodysuit by Friday Pang and Company. I think that might be my fifth one now. <laughs> so I'm all ready to start sewing my cardigan. I have got the instructions in front of me on my laptop. So step one of the instructions is to mark the centre points. Well, <laughs> I do that always. Whenever I cut a pattern piece out on the fold, I automatically notch the top and the bottom like a little snip into the fold. So I've done that. Step number two is to sew the shoulder seams. You are going to be using a three eighths of an inch seam allowance, which is the same as one centimetre. I've got them marked on my overlocker. I am going to be constructing most of this on my overlocker, but I will be using my machine as well, my normal sewing machine. My overlocker's got like little grooves on it, little lines. And when I got my overlocker I measured those and then I stuck washi tape on to the different lines and I wrote on what the different measurements are just so I'm always set so I can do two eighths three eighths four eighths five eighths whatever I need I can do so yes little tip there if you're wanting to um mark up your overlocker so I've got my back piece and then I've got my two front pieces here. So I'm just going to clip the shoulder seams together. So we're going to go shoulder to shoulder. Obviously make sure you've got the correct ones, the front pieces on the correct sides, basically. I'm just going to use a couple of clips to keep those in place. I'm going to do the same on the other side. And then I'm just going to overlock at three eighths and then I'm going to press and I'm just going to press that seam towards the back. 
Now in the instructions it doesn't tell you to press your seams as you go, not many patterns do to be honest, but I always press my seams as I go, you'll see I've got my iron set up there. I just find it easier to press as I go and I do think it gives a nice finish and then your seams are always pressed in the direction that you want them to be pressed when it comes to then joining on the next piece just makes life easier. So I've pressed those seams and now I'm ready to insert my sleeve into this armhole here. So on most patterns you'll find that you'll have a single notch and a double notch to indicate the front and the back of your sleeve and the front and the back of your body but on this pattern it's exactly the same. So the shape here is the same as the shape here and the same as on the sleeve so there are no notches to match We'll just match the centre notch up with this shoulder seam here and then we'll match the edges up and then we'll just clip in between as well. So I've got my sleeves clipped in now. You will notice that I'm using clips. I tend to use clips most of the time in my sewing practice but definitely when I'm using my overlocker because if you use pins and then you are overlocking it's very easy to not spot a pin and for it to go through your overlocker and break your overlocker. Clips are very visible, so there's a very, very, very tiny chance of that happening. So my preference is to always use clips when I'm using my overlocker. So I'm going to sew the sleeves in and then I'm going to press those seams. Now when you sew sleeves in you can either press the seams towards the body or towards the sleeve. Sometimes they give a slightly different look or sometimes the seam will kind of just fall one way or the other so I'm just going to see which way looks and feels right and then I'll press them in that direction. <laughs> I've pressed my sleeves so I've pressed that seam. It fell really nicely to press it towards the sleeve. So that's what I did. And I used my trusty prim tailor's ham because that shape of that sleeve head is a curve. So I wanted to be able to press it as a curve as well, rather than pulling it flat on the ironing board. So always use my trusty tailor's ham for any curved seams. So the next step in the instructions is to sew up the sleeves from the wrist down to the underarm seam and then continue all the way down to the hem of the cardigan and do that on both sides. So we're sewing up all the way under here on both sides. So I'm just going to clip those seams, I'm going to make sure I match underneath the arms, match at the wrist and match at the hem and then just pop a few other clips in and then I'm going to sew those seams and then press them towards the back. Just a little dose of reality for you. I started to realise that, you know how I, I replaced the blades and I thought everything was going wonderfully. I started to realise that it wasn't and my machine, oh, sorry for that. I started to realise that my machine wasn't actually cutting any fabric off. Now it's only a three eighths of an inch seam allowance, so it would only be cutting off one eighth, but it wasn't even doing that. It was taking that one eighth back through the machine. So that one eighth of fabric is within my seams. So it does mean that my seams are like a little bit chunky, chunkier than they should be anyway. So I've just spent the last, 20 minutes half an hour trying to sort that out and it turns out there was like one little step on fitting the blade that I hadn't done properly it had to slot in in a certain kind of way and it hadn't so the fabric wasn't cut in because the two blades need to be really flush against each other and they weren't there was a gap so they weren't cut in and it means I've sewn all of those seams <laughs> and there hasn't been cutting any fabric off but I feel like that's done now. I can't change that. The seams are absolutely fine. They're just a little bit chunkier than they should be. But because of the style of garment, I think that's going to be okay. I mean, what I could do, and I might do, is try it on. But even that wouldn't work really, because I can't go back and I was just thinking I could cut off those chunky seams and just sew it a little bit smaller. But I could only really do that down the side seams. I couldn't go back and do the shoulder seams again or the arm seams. <sighs> so yeah, reality. Not everything goes wonderfully. And... 
thought I'd been doing so well and I hadn't. So now I've got my blades actually together. I need to re-thread my machine because it just came unthreaded. It's just, you know what? I've had this machine quite a few years now and it wasn't the best of machines. Really, it was like quite a, an entry level machine. And I'm just wondering if I need a little upgrade. We were talking about this at the weekend, myself and Ruan and Rachel. And we were talking about Baby Lock, which is what so many people recommend. And it's so tempting. Obviously, that would be a huge investment. I think this machine cost me less than £300 and I'd be looking at well over £1,000 to upgrade. Well over. <laughs> but you think, I use my overlocker pretty much every single day. I sew so much on it. Maybe it's time for a little upgrade. Can I justify that? <laughs> Let me know down below what you think. <laughs> Is it worth the investment? Is it time for me to just bite the bullet? So yes, I'm just re-threading at the moment. I don't mind re-threading my overlocker actually. I don't find it too difficult or difficult at all really. But I mean, I wouldn't be mad if I had an air threader. It's only gonna speed up the process, isn't it? So yes, re-threaded. Let's check it and see if it cuts any fabric off, eh? So all of my seams have been coming out like that. And now it's fixed. That's what it looks like. <laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna go and try it on and see if I could get away with making it a bit smaller and trimming off those side seams. I'll be back. Okay, excuse the fact that I'm just in my sports bra and pajama bottoms. So this is what it's looking like. I could take some off. But you know what? The seam doesn't actually feel chunky when it's against my body. So I don't think I'm going to because I want this to be oversized and snuggly. That's how Tammy intended it to be when she designed it. I don't want to make it really fitted. Obviously, it's going to have a neck band on. But I think if the seam had felt really chunky and horrible, I would but it doesn't, it feels absolutely fine. So I think we're just gonna go with it. These things happen, don't they? So the next steps in the instructions are actually to either hem the sleeves or make the cuffs and attach those. As mentioned earlier, I'm going to leave the cuffs till the very end because I might make them a little bit longer than the pattern intends. So I'm gonna leave that till the last step, that is absolutely fine. So the next step for me is step nine, which is to hem the bodice. So this cardigan pattern doesn't have a hem band. You're just going to turn this up and stitch it. Now, knit fabric doesn't fray, or most knit fabrics doesn't fray or unravel. So you don't even need to finish that edge, but I am just going to run it through the overlocker. Now mine is working, okay. <laughs> I'm going to just overlock the whole of that bottom edge before I then turn it under and you turn it under by half an inch and then we're going to top stitch that down. Now I haven't even set my machine up with thread or anything yet so I need to go and choose a thread for that but for now I'm just going to overlock that and turn it under by half an inch. So I've pressed up the hem and I actually did that slightly more than the pattern suggests. The pattern suggests half an inch which is 1.3 centimeters but I was using my clover hot hemmer which is marked in half centimeters so I just did one and a half centimeters so slightly more but not very much. I actually go between my clover hot hemmer and my generates one which is the silicon one. I love them both so this one just happened to be handier, so this is the one that I used. But yeah, I would highly recommend a hot hemmer. I've just clipped that all along, and then I have found the perfect thread in my stash. I'm not using Maraflex because where I'm sewing isn't going to need to be stretched at all. It's the hem, so that's not a seam that is gonna to need to be stretched. So I'm just going to use a straight stitch and normal thread. This is thread number 25, Gutterman. I'm just going to top stitch my hem down, with that. So the next step, <laughs> I've just hung my cardigan up on the mannequin over there by the way, <laughs> the hem's looking really really nice. So the next step is to prepare the neckband pieces. So 
what the instructions have you do is to interface your neckband pieces with knit interfacing. The reason for that is for the buttonholes. So to add stability for then making buttonholes and then the pressure and stress that that will put on the garment. I have already made a decision that I would not wear this cardigan buttoned up. I just think the style for me wouldn't work. I am going to sew buttons onto it, but just fake ones on one side, just for detail. But I'm not going to make buttonholes because what's the point if I'm never going to button it up? So I've decided I'm not gonna add the interface in because that's an unnecessary step if I'm not going to do buttonholes, isn't it? So I just need to attach my two neckband pieces together, right sides together, to then make one long neckband piece. So that's what I'm going to do. So now I've got my cardigan and I'm going to find the notch at the centre back and I'm going to take the neckband centre seam and I'm going to attach those right sides together and just clip them there. And then I'm going to continue clipping the neckband all the way down one side and all the way down the other. Now, the instructions then say that you will have excess at the bottom hem, so you're not stretching it as you go, you're just clipping it and attaching it. And then we're going to sew it and then we'll chop off the excess at the bottom. So yeah, that's an unusual thing that I haven't really done in any other cardigan pattern really. It works because I did it on the short version that I made. So I trust Tammy, <laughs> she knows what she's talking about. So I've just clipped that all the way around and really when I made the short version, I should have made a note of this. Look how much excess fabric I've got at the end. So I've got that same amount of fabric at each end that I'm just gonna cut off and is now going to go to waste. So I'm going to measure that, make a note of it so that when I make this next time I'm just going to make my neckband shorter because I don't really want that much excess like in a piece that's just going to go to waste. So yes, note for future self, <laughs> cut a shorter neckband piece. Right, so I'm just going to sew this now. I'm going to do this on my overlocker again. Oh, I just read the instructions again. And it says, don't use an overlocker to sew this bit as it will create a bulky seam. So you can use a straight stitch or a zigzag. So I'm going to follow that. I'm not going to ignore that. I can't remember what I did on my other one. Maybe I did follow the rules. <laughs> I'm going to go and do that on my sewing machine then. And I'm just going to use a straight stitch. So we're going to sew this at half an inch seam allowance, which to me is just to the edge of my foot. And yeah, I'm gonna sew that all the way around. So I have sewn that all the way around. Then I've just cut off the excess of that neckband there. It instructs you to leave half an inch, but cut the rest off. And then I'm just going to trim the seam allowance down. So it says to trim it down to quarter of an inch all the way around. And then we're going to press that towards the neckband. So I'm actually gonna call it a night. I didn't realize the time it is quarter to 11, which is like, past my bedtime. So I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to come back to this tomorrow. So I have just pressed the seam all the way around towards the neckband. The next step is going to be to press over the opposite edge by half an inch all the way around and then we're going to fold that in half, pin it, sew it, finish the little hem corner at the bottom attach the pockets and then I just have to do the cuffs don't I at the end so there's not actually a lot left to do but you might be able to tell I'm getting a bit weary so I'm gonna leave it there and I'll come back to you tomorrow so I have now pressed that outside raw edge over wrong sides together by half an inch and I used this little gauge to do that there's my half an inch there and I've just pressed it and clipped it all the way around. So then the next task is to fold this over so it's just covering that stitching line underneath and pin that. Now, the instructions say to pin it from the outside and then that's where you'll sew from. But I'm actually going to pin it from the inside and then I'm going to tack it all the way around, just hand baste it in place remove the pins 
and then I'm going to sew it from the outside to try and make it nice and neat. I've just hand stitched the neck band all the way round from the inside so that then I can stitch in the ditch as closely as possible from the outside and it will catch everything underneath. That is the plan. I'm not a very fast hand sewer so that just added quite a lot of time to this project but I just feel like I want to do it right rather than fast so yes I've just hand basted it all the way around I've popped a little label in but I feel like I've done that in a bit of a wonky fashion <laughs> I just need to straighten that up a little bit but I've actually got a label that I am going to sew to the outside because it goes so perfectly so this is from Hey Sew Sister it's got this little cat on it in well, I thought it was a cat in a cape, but I think it might be a cat lying on some cushions or a blanket. And it just says, get cosy, but the colours just match perfectly. So that's going to go on one of the pockets, I think. So yes, I'm now just going to stitch the neckband down and then unpick my basting stitches. What I actually realised when I was doing that was that the pattern doesn't call for you to stitch in the ditch. So I've stitched within this line here, so you can't actually see my stitching. The pattern just calls for you to sew close to this edge, but because I hand stitched that neckband down, I thought I may as well just stitch in the ditch. If I've gone to the effort of hand stitching it first, hand basting it, then it makes sense to stitch in the ditch, I think anyway, in my head. So yes, I'm just going around with my seam ripper and I'm just unpicking all of my basting stitching. So I'll come back to you when I've done that. Neckband is almost done. It did add on quite a bit of extra time, but I'm really happy with the finish. So from the outside, you've got this really clean look because you've got no visible stitching. And then from the wrong side, look how neat that looks so i am really happy with that so the last little step of the hem band then is just to fold the bottom raw edge under i'll do this properly in a second when i'm <laughs> when i'm sorting it out but you'll end up with what should be a nice neat finish at the bottom and then we can just carry on stitching that down and then i'll stitch along there as well just to make it nice and neat and secure and that will be the bottom of the cardigan so what i'll probably do is follow along that stitching line there where i hemmed the bottom of the cardigan just so it all matches yeah i'm just going to do that on both sides one side done not perfect because of how many layers i was stitching through but i'm pretty happy with that to be honest Now onto the other side. I am really happy with the progress of this so far. We've got the neckband and the hem all completely finished. Lovely little label in there. So the only things left to do are to add the pockets, add the cuffs and sew on my pretendy buttons. But I'm going to come back tomorrow and do those things because it's late again. <laughs> night night. I'm finishing off the cardigan. So the cuff situation, after trying it on, I realised that I didn't need to add much at all to the cuffs. So this is the cuff pattern piece and this section here at the top is what I've added on. So that is about two centimetres. So that's all I've added extra length to the cuff, which will actually only be, by the time it's folded in half, one centimetre, won't it? So yeah, just a little bit extra. And I've cut those out, I've overlocked them, and then all I need to do is just sort of finger press that seam down and then I'm just going to match those seams and fold them like this and then do the same for this one. I've also chosen my buttons so in the most recent So Haley Jane box we got some gorgeous buttons from Pigeon Wishes and they actually go perfectly so it is these ones. I think they might be called Nightfall, but they've got like blues in, so they'll be absolutely perfect. And then I've just been prepping my pockets. So I've overlocked all the edges of my pockets and then I've just folded over by an inch 
the top of the pocket to the wrong side and I'm just going to stitch along there and then I'm going to add this lovely little label onto one of the pockets as well. Pockets are top stitched and I've just added in that lovely little label there. I measured in an inch from the bottom and an inch from the outside because this is going to be turned under by half an inch so I thought that would be quite a nice measurement. To apply that I used my trusty little glue pen which I got from Little Rosy Cheeks so I like to glue my labels down before I sew them in it just helps with keeping them in position and they don't shift about the way that pins do. So now I just need to go and press under each of these three edges by half an inch with the iron and then we can get them stitched onto the cardigan. I actually just decided to whiz the cuffs on. <laughs> whiz the cuffs on. Well, I did it on my overlocker, so it was a kind of whiz situation. So just overlocked on, seams matched, and then I just overlap where I start and end my overlocking and then just trim it off. And then that gives us our lovely cuff there. So we're nearly there, aren't we? cuffs. I mean I could just wear this now, this is a wearable cardigan. It's just the pockets to add on and the buttons which are just for decoration. So I'm really really happy with it. So my pockets are pressed under and then I've just positioned this one on the front of the cardigan. So it says 12 centimetres up from the bottom. So that's what I've done, I've measured that with the ruler and then I've placed it centrally between the front and the side seam of the cardigan. So I'm just going to take these clips out and then I'm going to pin it in place and stitch it on. We've got one pocket beautifully sewn. And no, I didn't worry about pattern matching this fabric. I don't think it needs it. So just time to sew on the other one. And that's the other pocket sewn on. Buttons time now. So I've used the buttonhole guide to mark on the positions of my buttons and I'm going to sit and enjoy a little bit of mindful hand sewing. <laughs> done cardigan is done just before i was about to start sewing the buttons on i suddenly realized that my pack of buttons only came in a pack of six the tammy handmade cara cardigan view a which is the one that i have made the longer version has seven buttons marked on the buttonhole guide so that's just worth remembering all i did was i re-spaced the buttons so that it accounted for six so i had the bottom button and the top button in the same place but then I just spaced these buttons out slightly differently so that it accommodated six buttons rather than seven and I'm so happy with those buttons they're just the perfect addition so I think I'll go and put this on and come back to you and share my thoughts and I'm ready to share my finished cardigan I I'm really, really, really happy with this cardigan. It feels really cosy. I'm really happy with the sizing on it. So if you remember rightly, I fell into a size 12, but I decided to sew a size 10 based on the finished garment measurements and my previous experience of Tammy's patterns. I also lengthened the cuff by two centimeters, which once you fold it in half is one centimeter. So I'll stand up and share it with you. I really, really love it. The fabric is gorgeous. Chester's just jumped on my lap to join me. <laughs> the fabric is gorgeous and feels so snuggly but I just also really really love this style and I'm so glad I've tried out the longer version as well as the shorter version of this pattern. So you can see the length there it is really really long and I love that. Where the pockets are my hands just about go to the bottom of the pocket. I could maybe do with the pockets being slightly further up, maybe 
a centimetre further up perhaps but that's just being picky because it is super cosy and lovely you can see the size and the style there I've got my lovely buttons on just for decoration because I would never wear this buttoned up like that that just wouldn't be for me so why bother putting buttonholes in if I don't need to I think I'll get a lot of wear out of this I'll definitely be wearing this out and about but I could also just snuggle up in it at home I definitely think I'd like to make another one as well so yeah another absolute winner from Tammy so in terms of how the sewing process went, obviously, as you'll have seen from the sew along, a few things went wrong along the way, or I changed a few things, which probably made it seem like a more complicated sew than it is. It's really not. It's a really straightforward sew. The instructions are fantastic. It's definitely beginner friendly, definitely approachable for all levels of sewist. And you end up with a really gorgeous garment at the end of it. And I think... Tammy has nailed it. So well done, Tammy. If you would like to get your hands on the Cara pattern and sew one up, then you can get 20% off the pattern with the code TAMLIN. So just enter that at checkout. You'll get yourself 20% off and you can sew up one of these gorgeous cardigans too. I will link to everything down below that I've talked about today. So fabric, buttons, all sorts of things will be linked down below. But do go and check out Tammy's website, her YouTube channel, and her other patterns because she's got some absolute beauties in there. Thank you so much for watching today. I really hope you've enjoyed this style of video and following along on the journey of me sewing my car a cardigan and maybe just seeing that not everything goes smoothly. <laughs> Even with a reasonably simple sew, things can still go wrong and we overcome them and end up with something really gorgeous at the end of it. So thank you for joining me today. If you don't already subscribe to my channel, I would love it if you would. And if you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below as well. Do have a little chat to me. What do you think of my finished Cara? What do you think of my shorter version? Which one do you prefer? And are you going to give it a go yourself? I hope you're all really, really well. And I'll see you again soon in my next video. Happy sewing. Bye.